Hello, Alberta Hummingbird Project. My name is Tara, and I am the one of the moderators of the group. And uh, I thought I'd uh, do a little um, introductory video on how this project came to be and who I am and a little history about myself. Um, many years ago, um, I grew up on northern Vancouver Island in Port Hardy, to be exact, where there was no programs. And in my day, it, uh, when I was a kid, not otherwise specified or mild retardation was the going gambit for just about every uh, disability concerning autism or ADHD or things not otherwise known. <laughs> and um, during that time, my mom in 1987, uh, her and a bunch of women uh, form, came together because all of their kids had one thing in common, they all had disabilities. And on Northern Vancouver Island at that time, there was no programs. There was special needs classes. And even in that era, a lot of people with disabilities were being put in group homes or taken away from families just because they had a disability and put away into asylums or whatever institution they wished to be put in. And uh, from there, um, I uh, got a chance to be a part of that program, which helped me with uh, certain skill sets. And then uh, we moved a lot when I was a kid and uh, in and out of special needs programs and whatever else when I was a kid. Um, and uh, basically uh, my fighting skills came from people like my mom, like my grandma was, and correct me if I'm wrong, mom, but my grandma was one of the uh, ombudsmen's for Sherwood Park. And she was also one of the um, people that uh, helped with uh, Alberta literacy as in helping people to read and advocating and promoting literacy, both in schools and in public uh, situations and with our government. And then I got older, married twice, uh, abusive relationships, you name it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and bad decision making. And that was due to the fact that where I was at the time, there was no programs like Peak Vocational Services, which is in Lethbridge. And uh, 20 years ago, I came to uh, Lethbridge and got um, into Peak Vocational Services, got on age, all that wonderful stuff. And it was places like Peak that allowed me to become the woman that you see before you, able to talk to you, um, able to um, communicate and uh, say what is on my mind, even though that I might not have tact or diplomacy or soft skills. Um, the facts remain is that they uh, gave me self confidence and allowed me to flourish and uh, succeed. And um, they also advocated for me and fought for me for what I needed and how they did things with was they um, focused on individual need as in all the program is about is focusing on ability and not what a person was born with or diagnosed with. They focused on the parts that are strongest and helped you with the areas that you may never develop or uh, are not so strong in. And they also taught you social uh norms or cues to look for, even though that you might have not the ability to develop it, at least you can recognize it. And uh, from there, um, they also taught me how to be independent and uh, voice my opinion and how to be confident and taught me how to be proud of who I am and from there, um, well, I moved to Edmonton 10 years ago before I was diagnosed with autism and ADHD. And I found that most programs um, cater to the more severe or uh, more seen issues on disability needs. And uh, people like me uh, fall through the cracks. I mean, <laughs> There are so many of us out there that PDD has denied because of whatever IQ test that they are given. And that's not right. I have PDD funding, but 
The problem is, is that most of Alberta, uh, most of Edmonton's programs run on this funnel system that n none of those with high function needs that are adult fit because not all disabilities are the same. Not all disabilities work on the same levels. And this is where our programs, uh, I hate to say this, they might be good for some, but for someone like me, they're not um, appropriate. Uh, they don't work on age or ability and they don't work on um, the person's needs. It's some of the needs that might fit one pretty little box or another, but all in all, I am a grown, single, uh, married, independent woman who gets an HCA staff for what she needs. And HCA people, healthcare aides, are trained to more of the severe end of uh, the spectrum, so to say. And I don't need somebody to dress me or bath me or do things for me. I know how to do all those things. What I need is someone in the more independent sense of the word where uh, neurological conditions might have uh, behavioral issues or issues uh, in developing uh, skills like tact and diplomacy and soft skills. And none of which I uh, have or if I was taught it years ago, chances are it's been long forgot because I'm about as blunt as a dull butter knife. <laughs> I will tell it straight it is right off the cuff and an ace of spade is an ace of spade no matter which way you look at it. And some people don't like that fact and quite often I get called rude because of it. Um, the problem that I see is that um, if programs were more individualized and more catered towards the person's needs, where proper assessments towards the person's disability itself, like say if a person can't walk, of course they're going to have an HCA staff. But if a person is like me, they need a disability skills coach. People that went through the, a course called Disability Studies Program, which is used to be at Grant McEwen up until a couple of years ago, uh, now kind of kibosh because interest wasn't showing and is still being taught in uh, the Bow Valley College. And it is people like that that would best suit my needs because they deal more on the neurological behavioral delay uh, conditions. And this is where I need help in. Um, and yes, you can see all the Darth Vader paraphernalia that my husband collects in the background. Sorry about that. But where you sit is where you sit, right? Anyway, <laughs> chances are you're going to see more of that. Um, I am what I, uh, well, let's just say I will say um, things that might be insulting to, to some. And to others, they'll just take it with a grain of salt. I'm saying... If it's insulting to you, just take it from a grain of salt. Because I come from an era where the R word, the N word, um, and other names might be misconstrued or otherwise. And for that equals um, my era being, I don't understand all the nuances and all the new names that people want to side with or uh, nouns that they wish to be called by. I side with a uh, high functioning autistic, comorbid, ADHD, because that is my diagnosis. Otherwise specified as Asperger's. Well, my joke for Asperger's is that those are burgers that come out of McDonald's. Think about it, Asperger. <laughs> anyway, I hope that made you laugh. Um, I'm funny by nature and a total uh, smart aleck uh, with a lot of sarcasm, but I'm also really up on where I fit in my life and where, how far I've come. Now, the Alberta Hummingbird Project, me and the group have decided that we wish to turn this into an association that works in partnership of all disability factions. That means advocacy groups, that means um, mothers, dads, kids, um, mainly adults, uh, because if you're high functioning like us, there is no program that fits the profile of someone like me. Because even though we're strong in many areas, we can do things for ourselves.
for the most part. There are parts to our issues where a disability a skills coach or a community coach that is trained in the disability aspects of cognitive or brain function um, would fit the profile for which Edmonton does not seem to understand because they think if it's not seen or heard, it doesn't exist. But here I am. Any study in the last 10 years that I've come across when it comes to ADHD or autism uh, primarily revolves around severe males if they're under 30 years old and or if they're children, quite often videos or stories depicting children are often young males that are high functioning if they have it and or very extremely autistic if they're kids or teenagers. And then there's people like me who, well, I'm here, I exist, I'm human. And the problem is, is that there are no studies depicting adults in our age group. Most of us run the gambit of 40. Maybe some of us are 30, but for the most part, those that are being ignored are the high function people like me. And as far as I'm concerned, every disability in its own right is a spectrum because every disability affects everyone different. Some of us are more, more comorbid than others. And some of us, my age, are still living at home because they don't have the right services to help them be independent. They, some of us, well, if I didn't have my husband, I wouldn't know how to bank my way out of a maze. How do I get through the red tape if my husband should get sick or die? How do I um, function in ways that uh, allow me to budget properly if I don't understand the value of money, let alone understand how to do the banking or the legal parts of things that deal with money? This is wrong. You don't put a healthcare aid with someone like me or someone like that is high functioning, you don't do that. Nor should you put them through a stupid test that is IQ related and only, and ignore the rest of the person's diagnosis. Cause that diagnosis comes from a professional that put ran you through the gambit to actually give you a diagnosis of what you have. It is that diagnosis that says exactly where you need help. And unfortunately, someone like me also has the capability of stating where they need help in. So therefore, we should not also have the choice and the ability to be able to say where we should be helped and where the best place of accessibility meets our needs is by allowing us to have that say. Uh, you people that are on the family managed system, lucky you, when it comes to PDD and me, I have pretty much no choice. I can talk until I'm blue in the face and they'll still throw me into an agency that does not fit my needs. And this is wrong. What happened? I want to be on the family managed, but I don't have that choice. I keep on telling them that I want that choice but I don't get it. Even though that I have a husband that can help me with that, as in the financial end of things, no, I get forced into a agency that does not fit my criteria. And I wish for that to change or at least have that changed for those like me. That way we can take the money to whatever agency that actually fits our needs by our own choice or hire someone privately that actually has the flippin' education. My fighting tenacity is because I'm ticked off at Edmonton for not allowing people like me to have better lives. Just because a person looks normal or sounds normal doesn't mean that their brain function is. I don't use AIDS. My other issue is that I have social anxiety disorder. It doesn't look like it because I'm able to have friends, but you get me into a huge crowd of people, 
Yeah, watch me do the funky chicken and faint on the floor <laughs> and have a meltdown right in front of everyone. These days, I'm more afraid of my future because if my husband should get sick tomorrow or um, pass away, that's the love of my life. That is pretty much my soul support. And that means that I rely on him for a lot of things. A husband sh and friends or family should not be put in this position ever. The ones that are trained in disability should have this position, as in workers trained towards neurological conditions for which fit the need of the person. I don't want an HCA staff. I want a disability skills coach. Two different roads, two different scenarios. One is physical, the other one is more of the disability range when it comes to brain function. We need to change this by bringing in places like Peak Vocational Services for which I come from in Lethbridge. I was there as a participant for, I guess, 10 years. And it was them that made me wanna do something like this. I always wanted to be a disability skills coach or a mentor for someone with high function needs, be it a teenager or an adult. Now, my ultimate dream with uh, Alberta Hummingbird is that I wish to turn this into an association that doesn't turn away people just because they don't qualify for PDD, we would find ways of supporting them and helping them, even if it means fundraising, just so that they can get the resources and the help that they need. I don't want to see another generation of us fall through the cracks or get the wrong services or be forced into places that don't fit the need. I also want Hummingbird to work on all facets of disability. That means advocating and being community driven by both parents, people like me. And I want it run by those and owned by those who have physical or mental or cognitive uh, neurological conditions for which are high functioning just like us. So if you have a learning disability, or if you have ASD, or if you have autism, or whatever you want to call it, I want it run by you. Because when I get too old, I'm going to need someone to take up my uh, end of things. I can't have kids, so I may as well adopt yours. <laughs> um. My hope is to leave a legacy for Edmonton that helps people with whatever situation they're in if they have a disability, especially a disability like mine. My wish and my goal is to work in partnership of all disability factions, no matter if they're an advocacy group or if they are a uh, group that helps disabilities uh, through life skills and whatever, because there might be a high functioner that could benefit from programs like this. I don't really, I don't want to see another generation fall through the cracks and get denied things. All disabilities have a chance to grow and to have a better life. And if that means having very few workers in their life in order to make that possible, so be it. You know what? I'm high functioning. And if I had a worker in my marriage to help me with certain things, me and my husband can go back to being husband and wife again. Because it's hell on a relationship when your husband has to be everything but a husband. And for someone like me, it's infuriating to have to sleep with your worker. And for those that live at home that are my age, you probably have ailing parents that have health issues of your own, their own. Who's taking care of who? I tell you, if I had to live at home with my mom and I had to support her, it would be hell on me and her. 
I mean, two feisty old women in the same room, one with a cognitive neurological deficit and the other one with a physical deficit. Who's supporting who? Who's taking care of who? It's not right. It's not fair. Parents should be parents and be left to that domain. Parents should be retired from being parents at a certain age. Parents should become friends with their children and grandparents to those that have children. Disability is lifelong, so programs should also be with willing to adapt throughout the person's life because for every age there is a change. I think it's about every 10 to 20 years that a person's body and mental capacity changes to a certain degree or another, depending on health issues, ability, mobility, and certain decision-making processes. Once you hit a certain age and your mind is fully functional and fully mature, the only thing is downhill from there because Neurons are slow to grow after a certain age. So that means dementia and things that are genetic also come into play as one ages. And that's where our medical system is also wrong in this aspect because no doctor, as far as I know, unless if they've taken the time in school to uh, become trained in uh, neurological deficits, such as the psychologist that I had, um, that got me diagnosed with autism unless if you have that kind of credential no doctor and no nurse no um aid staff has the knowledge to help someone like us especially if they're in a nursing home and again that's not right <laughs> There should be places that allow or have the capability to supporting people like us as we go, go get on an age and it should be adaptable to one's uh, disability. So that way um, there's assessments done at least once every couple of years. That way they know where you f are in life and how to address certain issues that may or may not crop up. And this is what I propose is that we all pull together because it takes a community to make this work and it's going to take a community to bring it together. And what I'm asking all of you to do is become that community. Just by being here, you all rock because it shows me that you support my idea and the idea that we all stand for. And through this, I'm pretty sure we can get this going. By knowing my story and knowing where I am from and how Peak Vocational Services greatly impacted my life and why I would like to adopt some of their um, ways of doing things and put it into this project. I don't want to see another person be denied services that they need. And I'm hoping that this is the answer. Thanks, guys. Perhaps some of you can introduce yourselves through what I'm doing or even just typing it out. You know my story. Got any questions? Feel free to ask. Thanks.